Barakata Yahwa, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakahakudash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Aki, am out there pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you, brothers, endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off in Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, which is the biblical name for Russia, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, Russia, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. And where it says, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, that's talking about the Most High putting that old confrontational Soviet Union spirit back on these Russian Edomites. And you can clearly see that it's taken place as we speak. During the Syrian civil war, you had Russia help out Bashar al-Assad's government in sending military hardware and some troops there to beat back the United States of America and Israel's proxy armies of ISIS. Russia also built up back up one of their military ports in uh, Syria, Russia has been doing political as well as military deals with Sudan. You have Russia helping out Turkey build up nuclear facilities down there. Russia, of course, being a top ally of Iran. And what have you seen just recently? Russia recognizing the breakaway republics of Luhansk and Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. And if you know a little about history, you'll know that Ukraine was a former territory of the Soviet Union. And even before that, part of Ukraine was a part of the Russian Empire. And where it says, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. That's speaking of Russia's military might, their hardware and troops. And like I just said, they brought them forth into Syria to help out Bashar al-Assad. And then information has just come out showing that Russia has sent peacekeeping military forces to uh, Luhansk and Donetsk. But I opened up the video with these verses to preface a little bit of a video from Al Jazeera English's YouTube channel titled Why the Russia-Ukraine Crisis Just Got Much Worse to show that the Most High has definitely put those hooks back into Russia's jaws and pulled them back into that old Soviet Union spirit. We are literally seeing biblical prophecy taking place before our very eyes. Hi everyone, there's a lot going on with Russia and Ukraine, so we thought we'd jump on to answer a few questions and help you get your head around the basics. Starting with, what just happened? So on Monday, Russia's President Vladimir Putin officially recognized two breakaway areas in eastern Ukraine. Both of them are in the Donbass region. They call themselves the People's Republics of Luhansk and Donetsk. And they've been controlled by pro-Russian separatists since 2014, with Russia's backing. Now these so-called People's Republics make up around one-third of the Ukrainian districts of Luhansk and Donetsk. And there's what's called a line of control with the separatists on one side and the Ukrainian forces on the other. They've been fighting each other off and on across that line for years, even though there's supposed to be a ceasefire. One thing to keep in mind is that the separatists lay claim to all of Luhansk and Donetsk, not just the one third they control now. And Putin confirmed that Russia's recognition of the independence of these so-called people's republics also includes their claim to that extra territory. Now, President Putin made another big move. He's ordered Russian soldiers to go into the separatist areas. He says they're peacekeepers. I mean, we've been speaking to people inside the self-declared Republic of Donetsk. They were describing the Russian military build-up as being like nothing they'd seen before. They described tanks 
um, grad missile system. So this is a really big deal. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, tanks, grad systems, helicopters, troops, you name it. Because it raises the risk of a direct confrontation between Russian and Ukrainian forces, and that could trigger something even bigger, maybe a full-blown war. Don't forget, Russia looks ready for one. It's been building up troops along Ukraine's border for months. The U.S. reckons there are now up to 190,000 soldiers surrounding Ukraine on three sides. Everything from, of course, the high-end uh, weapon systems uh, to field hospitals uh, to logistics uh, to command and control. Okay, so next question. Why did Putin make this move in eastern Ukraine? Well, you can answer that on a few different levels. There's the on-the-ground stuff. <laughs> says Russian speakers and Russian citizens living in eastern Ukraine have been under attack all these years by Ukrainian forces and they need protection. And recently, separatist leaders started evacuating people to Russia. They accused Ukraine of planning a military operation to retake the territories. But Ukraine rejects that accusation and the US, NATO and others think Putin has just been cooking up an excuse to go in. President Putin made a series of outrageous false claims about Ukraine aimed at creating a pretext for war and immediately thereafter announced Russian troops are entering the Donbass. He calls them peacekeepers. This is nonsense. We know what they really are. So why might Putin be willing to consider a war? Well, that takes us to the other thing he's been talking about a lot, NATO, the Western military alliance, and what he feels is an intolerable threat to Russian security. Putin has basically been telling NATO to get out of his neighborhood. He wants guarantees that it will never admit Ukraine as a member and stop any further expansion to the east. NATO says it will never agree to that, that Ukraine is a sovereign country and that it's not for Russia to decide even though it's pretty unlikely that Ukraine would join NATO anytime soon. But here- And this is ultimately through the will of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai to fulfill prophecy, putting hooks into Gog or Russia's jaws to pull them back into that Soviet Union spirit. And uh, it's been coming out a lot that a lot of these things going on with uh, Ukraine and Russia building up its forces along the borders has just been the US hyping up propaganda to demonize Russia because uh, Russia has done drills like this before, bringing up a lot of military forces up to Ukraine's borders. But on the flip side, Russia cannot allow the U.S. to gain a foothold in the Ukraine because they know that that would allow the U.S. to put missile systems nuclear capable in Ukraine, which would heavily uh, compromise Russia's ability to defend itself against a US NATO nuclear strike. There's a lot of factors in place of, why, of uh, why what's going on in that area is going on in that area. But again, it's ultimately through the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Here's another thing. When Putin announced Russia's recognition of the breakaway areas, he gave a long rambling speech complete with his own take on history, which included the idea that Ukraine is part of ancient Russian lands. He essentially questioned the whole legitimacy of Ukraine as an independent country. Итак, начну с того, что современная Украина целиком и полностью была создана Россией, точнее большевистской, коммунистической Россией. Украина, по сути, никогда не имела устойчивой традиции своей подлинной государственности. The speech by President Putin, the sixty. And just look at history. The Ukraine was a part of the Soviet Union. And uh, parts of Ukraine were a part of the Russian Empire. Hey, this is Russia's backyard. And hey, again, this is the Most High putting that Soviet Union confrontational spirit back on these Russians. When the Soviet Union collapsed, hey, they tucked their tail for a little bit to the United States of America and NATO. But we're living in the last seconds of the last days where all of these heathen nations are about to go to war with each other during World War III. So the Most High is building up everybody accordingly. 
25 minute long diatribe. Many analysts have said it's a declaration of war. He's not invading because it's not a sovereign country. That's his narrative. Okay, so next question. What's the response been? So with this video, you get the point. But with all this being said, and what's going on in Ukraine, Ukraine will not be the main place where World War III takes place. This is just one of the rumors of wars that Yahawashai Hamashayak, whom the world ignorantly refers to as so-called Jesus Christ, told his disciples about in Matthew chapter 24. This is Matthew chapter 24, I'm gonna start at verse six. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We've had the Syrian civil war, the Libyan civil war, the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, the Yemeni war, et cetera, et cetera, and rumors of war, a war between the US and NATO and Russia over Ukraine, and that whole situation going on between the US and China over Taiwan. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Neither Ukraine nor Taiwan is gonna be what's gonna kick off World War III. What's actually going to be the, the catalyst for World War III is a situation in the Middle East dealing with Israel and Iran. Some Israel's going to do something that's going to drag in the United States of America in on their side against Iran. And that's going to drag in Russia, China, and Iran's other allies in on her side. And they're all going to fight in that Middle Eastern region in what's called the Battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the War of Armageddon. Because biblical prophecy has a type, uh, uh, a timeline, and World War III will not fully kick off until the MOTB, the Karagma, in Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 to 18, that RFID slash NFC, M I C R O C H I P I M P L A N T is mandatorily implemented, and shortly thereafter, that situation is going to happen in the Middle East, which is going to drag all these heathen nations down into the Valley of Jehoshaphat for World War III. Verse 7, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Some of the other end time signs Yahawashai told his disciples to look for. But as it says in verse 8, All these are the beginning of sorrows. So while you may see some skirmishes in Ukraine or even in Taiwan or other places, these are all the beginning of sorrows. World War III will not kick off until the Karagma is mandatorily implemented. And then again, all these heathen nations are going to be gathered down into the Valley of Jehoshaphat or that Middle Eastern region. Now I'm going to close it out in Joel chapter 3 verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. The heathen Gentiles, you Edomites or so-called white people, you Moabites who are the so-called Chinese, the Ishmaelites who are the so-called Arabs, the Elamites who are the so-called East Indians, Hamites who are the so-called Africans, etc., etc. Prepare war, World War III, war with Iran, the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the War of Armageddon. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. The state of Israel, Saudi Arabia, the United States of America, NATO nations like Britain, France, Germany, China, Iran, Turkey, Russia, or Gog. Hey, having those hooks put into their jaws and turned back into that Soviet Union spirit and bringing down their horsemen and shields and bucklers down into that Middle Eastern region to help out Iran, which coincidentally is what it further says in Ezekiel 38. Persia, which is the ancient name for Iran, Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togermah of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare thy, for thyself. I will bring thee forth and all thine army and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be thou a guard 
a protector unto them when uh, the state of Israel and you and the United States foment a situation to go to war against Iran. Hey, that's going to drag in Gog in on the side of Persia to be a guard unto them. And a couple of months ago, you had the state of Israel and the United States of America doing joint Air Force drills to simulate an attack on Iran's nuclear facilities. And so all the pieces on this chessboard of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai are coming into place to fulfill prophecy. Assemble yourselves together and, and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh, and those mighty ones are the death angels of the Most High, holding back this great destruction, waiting to get the go-ahead to release it. Which, like I was just saying, there's a biblical timeline to prophecy. Certain prophecies need to take place before other ones take place. And once that karagma is mandatorily implemented, shortly thereafter, that's when you're going to see this battle of World War III kick off in the Middle East. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which in the Hebrew is Yahweh's Shapat, which means Yahweh's judgment. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And when you read the first couple of verses in this chapter, you'll see ultimately why the Most High is gathering these heathen nations down into the Valley of Jehoshaphat to judge them for afflicting the apple of his eye, the children of Israel, who are known as the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans today. And at the top of the list are you biblical Edomites as pursuant to Psalms 83. And you Edomites are known as the so-called white people today. These Americans, Europeans, these Russians, etc., etc. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. And if you've got that spiritual eye salve, you can clearly see the day of Yahweh is very near in the valley of decision with all these end times prophecies either in the process of taking place or taking place as we speak so that's it with this video and with this video i hope your sincere akim and akwath were edified just keep strong we're almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations chiefly of the edomites and as always i'm gonna say abad babal kwam yasharala and until next time shalom